All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show here with my friend, Coach Carm of Siena Saints, but he's also a Falcons fan here for Sports Ethos, Falcons, Cash, Jared the Boss Man, here with my boy, Coach Carm. Carm, how's life, man? How you doing, brother? Doing great, Boss Man. You know, since we last spoke, uh, took the team to Italy for 10 days, you know, Rome, Siena, Assisi, Florence, Lake Como, that was amazing. Now we're back here, recruiting season's on, got some official visits lined up and uh, workouts with the team. So just getting ready for the season. We start official practice September 26th. So now I'm just, now I'm just getting, hopefully we get some Falcons wins too to, to tide me over to practice time. I hear that. Now, Carmen ask you this, man, you being from New York, man, how'd you become a Falcons fan, man? Man, so growing up, you know, I'd go to the grocery store with my mom and uh, you'd always leave the grocery store and you'd have these little machines out there. You put a quarter in, you could get an NFL football helmet. So my dad and I would just, you know, if we went on flights or trips, I'd always have like a little bag of all my NFL helmets. And then I just, I love the Falcons old school helmet with the red. Uh, and then I started watching football with my dad at an early age. He's a Notre Dame alumnus. So, uh, you know, would watch always Notre Dame football on Saturday. And then on Sundays, it was always just watching football. Anytime I could see the Falcons, especially back when prime time and bad moon were playing, uh, you know, Chris Miller, uh, Bobby A. Bear, uh, you know, so I would just Billy Joe Tolliver. I mean, all these guys, right. I would just watch the games and I love the Falcons and just, you know, throughout that Jamal Anderson, the dirty birds, Michael Vick, uh, all the way till now, I just always stayed a Falcons fan, you know, all the way through. And it's funny, I got some players on my team, uh, you know, who are Falcons fans as well. So, you know, my guy, Jared Billups, him and his dad are Falcons fan. He was actually, you know, kind of born in, uh, in, in Atlanta, Georgia. So they've been Falcons fans. So it, it's good. It kind of connects me to different people. Um, and I've just always kind of enjoyed it. And uh, I think Atlanta is a great city. I always love visiting. And now I just got to make sure I get to a game. Yes, man. Uh, did you ever go to one in, in, in the Georgia Dome before before it got tore down? I, I I didn't. I went to the Georgia Dome for some Final Fours, um, gotcha. but that was that was it. Yeah, like you know, seeing the Beans, man, taking the place of the Georgia Dome for me because I was born in I was born in the '80s, so I had the Georgia Dome as well. I knew, you know, I didn't get to experience Fulton County Stadium other than for down for Brave games, so I didn't get to experience the Falcons at Fulton County, but. The, the dome used to be very hype, man. They made a lot of noise because a lot of false starts. It just and in the new stadium here, it doesn't have that same feel. It's a nice stadium, great ambiance, but it doesn't have that same feel for the noise factor that makes other teams fear coming into, into Atlanta. Yeah, no, and that's that's something, right? You want to have a home field advantage, and that's something we tried to do here. My first season at Siena, uh, you know, now we've named it the MVP Arena, but it was the Times Union Center. We were fourteen and zero. Um, at home my first year. And I thought that really set the tone and, and it helps, you know, it gets your fans pulling behind you. It helps sell tickets. And, uh, you know, you, you want it to be a, a feared place, right? You want people, you know, worrying about what they're going to do and, and what silent count they're going to go at when they're down in the goal line because the fans are so rowdy. That, that stuff makes a difference. That home field advantage, you know, there's a reason Vegas gives you points for that. You got that right, man. You got that right. And I'll tell you off the air on Sunday, it was more Saints fans in the bins than it was Falcon fans. And while we had a good contingent, but it was more of the, them making noise, forcing Marcus Mario to go silent count in our own home stadium with the roof closed. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll change that. I know Coach Smith will do a great job. And, you know, I'm excited to go beat the Rams this weekend. That's, that's what I'm excited for. I thought, you know, we showed uh, obviously – Getting Drake London out there was was huge for 70 plus yards. Patterson coming off of a career high. You know, I thought for three quarters we really looked like the dominant team. And then, you know, we had some some ill-advised turnovers and and just, you know, no some killer instinct that we didn't have that we needed to just finish a couple plays. And Carl, you know, I felt a six field in my stomach when Marcus Marcus fumbled that ball. I said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it, it, it hit me like this might not come back like to bite us. We need, we, we're going to need at least them three points. And it, 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 it showed it to be true that it was that what happened. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, that was disheartening. But I thought, you know, on the positive side, our offensive line was good. I thought Pitts did a good job. He was, I think, only targeted seven times, maybe two receptions. But, you know, I thought him blocking did a great, great thing for us. You know, we were able to protect Marcus, too. Um, and then coming into this Rams game, you know, Stafford was sacked seven times in their opener. 
and uh, threw three picks. So if we can get to him, you know, I thought we did a good job mixing it up on Winston. And then he just got hot, you know, late. But that that was for me, when you see a quarterback get hot, it's the same thing when, you know, you're playing and, and there's a point guard that's really, you know, getting in a groove. You know, I'm blitzing him. I'm switching up ball screen coverages. You know, I may double off somebody else and, and leave a non-shooter open. Um, but then I'm also going to have to run longer possessions. I'll be more aggressive on that offensive end. And I know Coach Smith has talked about it in the media, you know, not going for it on fourth and one um, and, and trying to kind of bleed the clock a little bit and, and punt. But obviously your defense, the last two possessions, wasn't getting stops. Um, so I think that always has to come into play. Obviously, I'm not playing armchair quarterback. I know enough people want to play armchair quarterback with me, uh, you know, after oh, a yeah. loss. But, you know, for three quarters, we were the better team and we were there. Um, so I think that's that's favorable. And then it's, you know, like you said, we got to win our home games. You know, you can't get that game back. And now we got to, you know, get that one and even it up when we go to New Orleans. But uh, no, I'm, I'm excited for this team. And, you know, I think Marcus being a veteran quarterback, hopefully, you know, Ritter's getting some good reps in practice and understanding what he's got to do. But I think Marcus can take this team to where we need to, at least early on. We got to just get a couple W's on the way. And Carm, I love what Marcus gives us that run pass option. You can get so many options open up for Cordero or Damian Williams when Damian Williams isn't injured. So that's a positive for me too. So also Marcus's legs can hold the linebackers to allow Kyle Pitts to get behind the second level there and be open in the middle of the field. So I feel like Marcus's legs and the ability to run opens up things for everybody on the offense. No, I uh I agree. I mean the, just we gotta we gotta shore up that that late game defense, right? That you know, twelve plays, two hundred and eight yards for the Saints in that fourth quarter. Um, that that was disheartening, but you know, hopefully we make those adjustments on the defensive end. And you know, obviously it's not going to be an easy game out in uh, Los Angeles, but I I think we can go get that one. I think people are going to be sleeping on us, and uh, we just can't have a hangover head into that game feeling sorry for ourselves. You know, I thought we played tough, we played physical. We got to be able to execute and finish it off. That's it. And Carl, I'm actually excited for the for the Falcons this year, you know, because I feel like this is a year where we the last year we in cap sets payoff per se. We get that Matt Ryan number of 40.9 off our cap. We'll have 45 million in cap space to grow this team, find pieces this year. So this year for these guys is a year, I'll say this all the time, Carl, year of evaluation for these guys because next year with so much cap space. Are you part of the future or you just did for this year? So I, I tell these guys, I probably told them, look, you, you need to prove yourself this year because we got cap space. We can sign guys to replace you next year. So ball out this year, show Terry Fontenot, show Rich McKay off the blank, off the Smith that you want to be here and that you're a part of the Falcons' future in this rebuild we're doing. We have great pieces right now, and we're going to be a re force to be reckoned with in year, in year three and four of Art's tenure here. Yeah, but, I, you know, I think he's still got to continue to, to lay the foundation and the non-negotiables with how he does things and how he handles everything. Um, and I agree. I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a great time. I mean, I've always been a Falcons fan, so it's, it's I think we're right there. And then it's just a matter of, you know, that that one hurts just because it's a it's your season opener. Right. And we haven't done well. We know in, in years past in season openers. So the chance to knock off the Saints in the first game of the season at home, um, you know, that's gone. We don't talk about that anymore. Now it's just focusing, uh, focusing on the Rams. It'll be interesting to see kind of what the game plan is because, you know, if, if we're, if we're scoring too quick, we don't want to give the ball back uh, to Stafford. And then you got to guard Cooper cup, right? Like he, he's, he's been on a tear uh, obviously a Super Bowl MVP. The good thing about coach Pease, coach Pease can play zone or man. He's a football savant. He can disguise coverages very well. So I'm thinking we're going to see a lot of pressure looks and back out in those fire zones to see if uh, Stafford will make a mistake. Because I feel like sometimes he determines where he's going to go with the ball before he snaps the ball. Yeah, I thought he's – especially when he was in Detroit. I definitely thought that for sure. Um, no, so, hey, like I said, I'm excited for Sunday. Big weekend for us. We got two official visits lined up with uh, our top two guys. And then uh, hopefully I'll get to watch some watch some football. No doubt. Well, folks uh, – Guys, we need to pause show for a second and tell you about Sports Ethos September. It's a fancy football draft season here, Sports Ethos. So this year, 
get your we also sell some say once a year people so go to our site get your critical fancy football growth hit sportsethos.com click on the premium tab today grab a premium subscription and get a draft guide today and yes to answer your most important question a brewski 150 is included in both options check back daily for more features on sportsethos.com <laughs> Back to my man, Coach Carbs. He called me to do live read, man. See, it's what radio is for me. I gotta do live reads, brother. <laughs> but man, hey, how's it feel, man? Fourth year, man. Sienna, man. Uh, hey, this has already been four years for you, the head coach there, man. Man, time flies. You know, everyone talks about how it is sliding over um, that next that next seat. You know, going from an assistant to the head coach, and um, no, I really love it. It's. Uh, just a blessing to be able to impact lives every day and, you know, help out in the community and make a difference. Um, and to do it at a place where I'm from, where I played, where I grew up, where I dreamed about playing. Um, now I'm leading the program and, uh, you know, to, to be able to win the league in my first year, we're picked preseason sixth and we win the league outright to the second year to be the, the second longest team on pause and to play a game, not have a non-conference be preseason favorites and still win the regular season. Um, and then year three, I had six guys out, you know, six scholarship guys out with injury. We were picked preseason eight and we finished third. Um, so first, first and third in my first three years. And, you know, now the goal is, you know, like it is every year to get to the NCAA tournament. Um, but really enjoy it. Really just, you know, being able to do things like this is, a, is a, obviously a bonus. So boss, man, I appreciate that. And, you know, it, it's it's great. I wake up every day. I kiss my wife and kids and I'm um, just really thankful to, uh, you know, be able to live a dream. I hear that, man. You know what? Like you said, man, I've been doing, I can told you just I mean, we, we, we had some dinner that at night, man. I've done this for almost 12 years, man. So I'm lucky and I'm blessed, you know, to be able to cover sports. When I, I got out of my football career to just go in this this lane and still be around it. So I fucking like so blessed to be, meet you, be friends with you. And you know, this business that got me so many friends with being being in this business. I thought I'd ever be a radio host of my car. I thought I'd be in the NFL. But I didn't make it, so now I'm a radio dude. I'm surrounded, man. It's a blessing. Yeah, and, and then on top of it, right, your stuff with the Hawks is great too. So you're able to kind of dip and dive and, and just, you know, now we just got to see. We got to keep keep Julio Jones, keep him going. Yes, yes. Our, our, our good friend who turned off, turned, I, <laughs> you know, he didn't tell me, Carm, to the last second. Crazy. He, I'll say, I'll say, Julio, I didn't want to upset you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was the last second, man. Hey, at least now he's going to have some some Tom stories, right? Yes. But I wanted to call him, will he actually play? Because it's the last game of the season, January night when he comes back to Atlanta. Will he actually play that game? That's that's the question. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I hope so, man. I hope so. And Carl, for you, man, I know being in New York, the rules for COVID was hard. So this summer, having actually having your guys maybe to work out together for eight weeks, not be or not be away from each other. So how good was that to get back in that groove this summer, man? Oh, uh, it was awesome. You know, we had, you know, different, we call it finish Fridays where we have special kind of, you know, team set workouts with, you know, tire pushes and, and sleds and, you know, more like a, you know, training session for football where we just kind of test our guys' mental toughness and their will. Um, so we're able to do that. We're able to get on the court. We're able to just kind of grow our group. Uh, you know, bring in some international guys, which was great. And, and so for me, it, it was awesome. And then on top of it, like I said, we got to go to Italy. So we just, we always talked about just growing our collective unity, right? Just growing that love for one another. You know, so when you're on the court, it's seamless, right? You're communicating, you're talking, that ball's moving. Guys are having fun and just love playing the game together. And that for me is the biggest thing. And tell us about the Italy trip, the experience you all have. What, what, are, what are special things that you've seen in Italy? And how cool was it bringing your guys over there to see another country, another culture, and see how life is in Europe? Oh, man, it was great. You know, I was fortunate enough to play overseas in Italy for four years with an Italian passport. I have Italian citizenship and uh, got to go to Siena, um, obviously our namesake. And we got to go to Assisi, which St. Francis Assisi is obviously what Siena was named after. And it was it was awesome to see the churches, to see the history, to see the art, um, but then just to also in, enjoy a different way of life and to enjoy the food. I had some amazing risotto uh, with uh, melon and, and white onion. That was one night. You know, my wife is uh, 
you know, pregnant. We're expecting our third child here in November. And uh, she was able to make her first foreign tour. Uh, when I was at another university, we went to Japan and she was expect we were expecting our first and she couldn't make that trip. So uh, able to kind of reward her, obviously being a coach's wife is thankless too. So being able to have her on the trip was awesome. But yeah, the guys really enjoyed it. I, I, my favorite part though, was probably going to Siena. And back when I played, Montepaschi Siena was the A1 team that was in the Euro League, and they were one of the best teams, uh, you know, in the early 2000s. And so just to go there and to that gym, they had some financial issues. Um, and so they lost their their A1 kind of sponsorship and had to re, kind of rebuild. But uh, that was awesome to see a sissy was awesome. But just to be with the guys, to be with the whole program, you know, we took them karaoke in one night in in uh, Florence. Uh, so some guys have some talent. Other guys don't. You know, I have my, my sports information director. You know, I think he sung Coolio and at that same time with a guy from Iceland who was a freshman. And I would say that would probably be somebody that would have got, you know, if you remember the gong show, they definitely would have got the gong. Before, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> before three words. But. Uh, no, it was great, man. Just thankful for our, our president, our athletic director to be able to do those things. You know, we want to take a foreign trip every four years because it, it grows your group and, uh, it was really good. So I appreciate you asking. Man, Carl, it's good to catch you ever, it's with you, my brother. Good to see you, man. I'm just standing on Lake Point, man. Let me know, man. I know you're playing in Orlando over the Thanksgiving. I, I'm going to be on the road, unfortunately, but, uh, man, they say down South, man, we got to have some fun, man, for real, man. Appreciate it for sure. I'll make sure I reach out and, uh, you know, keep enjoying what you do. And thanks for having me on. Anytime, Carl. Be safe, buddy.